made a rabbit kick him, and, and, and this was made in 1896. So, I don't know, I, I just didn't really want to go there. And, Yes, well, um, I think that it depends on the individual um, and the individual institution. As I said, some institutions are tossing their Charles Knights, while others have had them on permanent display since 1933. So those are the differences between two museums. But when you get down to individual people who love paleo art and love prehistoric stuff, uh, yeah, you get some pretty eccentric characters. And some of them have inflated senses of uh, you know, of value. I, I love that painting, but I think it's, it's a little steep to ask a million for it. Um, yeah, you know, um, I, would, I would direct you to his website, but it's uh, X-rated, and I <laughs> say exercise caution. Anyone else? <laughs> oh, sure. So well, now, these are all pigment paintings. Have you seen, like, ZBrush and Maya and di digital dinosaur artwork that impresses you at all? Um, not really. Um, I'm an old-fashioned uh, girl, really, um, and I mean, that's, that's, sorry, that's really unfair. There is some beautiful work being made digitally, but it leaves me cold. Um, I think that the problem with a lot of digital work is that it can sometimes be a bit sterile and overly beholden to photographic convention. So, um, you see, you know, I think a lot of work, um, especially depictions of, say, the mosasaur chasing, you know, the, the fish or the whale or the little ichthyosaur, you know, it'll have a fisheye lens distortion, right? And it's like, a, you know, a digital thing is trying to mimic a camera because we're so used to that planet Earth, um, you know, nature, photography, like you're right up, um, you know, next to the mouth of the great white shark as it chomps the seal and you can count every fleck of blood flying through the air. Um, you know, these artists, artists like Charles Knight, you know, he was looking at, at impressionist painters like, you know, Claude Monet, who's throwing purple shadows like, like these dryptosauruses are. And um, as, as a, you know, art historian whose background is in modern and uh, pre-digital contemporary, um, I'm more attracted to uh, paleo art as a studio practice. So while I think that paleo art um, that's made digitally uh, is tremendously informative and obviously grounded in as much if not way more in some cases, you know, fossil evidence um, and has a lot to teach us, it's just aesthetically not my bag and that's why it's on the book. I love these questions and I, I, I truly want them to continue, but I also want to give Zoe a break and get her something to drink. So why don't we, why don't we become a, a little bit more of an informal group, give Zoe a chance to uh, give you a chance to peruse the book and maybe some of you would like to purchase it. Give Zoe a chance to sign the books for those of you who do purchase them. And uh, let's break into a more informal group. You can go grab a drink if you want and come back and give Zoe a chance to sit down and rest, put her feet up a little bit. But let's thank her one more time.